My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract. You need a team of pros. Hey, what's up, guys? Alex with Bay Cities Construction here. Hey, we've got a really cool show about ADUs. You don't know what an ADU is? It's an auxiliary dwelling unit. And we also have an update on our laminate test. We've had a piece of laminate flooring in water for how long? Three weeks. Three weeks. A bucket test. All right, we got the bucket test. Uh, we did a show, for those of you that uh, watched it a few weeks ago, we did a... Um, a show on laminate flooring or flooring and one of them was laminate it's bomb proof but let me show you what the results are so hey stay tuned we'll be right back my name is alex rodriguez reminding you don't need a contract you need a team of pros hey folks Alex Rodriguez Bay Cities construction here let's get started with the show hey um, just want to remind you guys if you haven't seen our shows or if you want to watch like a rebroadcast it's easy to find on YouTube uh, it's a uh, Bay City builds on uh, YouTube uh, last week we did the flooring deal with uh, urban flooring Episode 18. That'll make it easy for you to find. Oh, holy smoke. Sorry, I have a little technical difficulty here. Got to connect my screen. So anyhow, anyway, we're going to be talking about um, the... We're going to just do a little quick recap on flooring. But we have a ton of really cool info about the ADUs. Okay? So don't go away. All right, so let's get... Uh, let me get my screen back on here so you can... We can get going on here and get started with the show. Screen's live. All right, show them screen. Okay, hey, so we got the bucket test. All right, so real quick, uh, we for those of you who didn't didn't watch the show, we uh, we've had these pieces of laminate flooring in a, a bucket. And actually, let me step off camera here real quick. Here's our bucket, same blue bucket that's on the picture. And let's see if this thing delaminated or if it did anything weird. So normally, these things buckle like crazy around here, around this edge. So let me give you a profile shot, front shot. You know it looks pretty much unfazed, and it's been in the bucket of water. No, it doesn't smell funny or anything like that, but it's been there for three weeks. So anyway, this stuff is bomb proof, made by Urban Floors. If you want to get more info on it, um, please look at episode 18, and um, I think you'll find that somewhat interesting at least very informative this is typically what happens when you expose it to water um, any of this laminate flooring so don't end up like that let's you you know use a good product urban floors makes a real nice the cascade series makes uh, is pretty nice by the way we sell that and install it okay tonight's episode ADU what is it what are the benefits of it and three tips I got some really cool tips because you know we've been processing this stuff. This is a totally new thing, um, so we got some case studies that I'm going to share with you. Some of the uh, the pitfalls and the headaches that I've had to deal with in getting these things approved. Because unlike most contractors, I do the plans um, for the stuff we build. So anyway, let's do a little quick recap on what an ADU is. So with the infinite wisdom of our more than qualified legislators. Uh, they have a, a bit of a pinch with uh, affordable housing. So they approved AB 2299, SB 1069 into law in 2016. It's taken about a year and a half or so for the cities to figure out how to do this and get some guidelines. But basically, basically an ADU is the legal name for your, your previously illegal uh, dwelling like let's say uh, people separated in a single family residence, single family neighborhood, people would convert the garage or do an illegal addition or some other crazy thing like that. So now this this law, these laws give you a legal pathway to get to get your illegal structure, your illegally converted garage back into the good graces, the good graces of the uh, building safety office. Oh, yeah. 
So you, you're gonna have to. Uh, no, but you know, put them on on okay. don't, don't disturb. So, so let's talk about um, what it looks like, what it's gonna take to get it done. Some people call it granny flats. Um, in the city of Beverly Hills, of all places, uh, they've been illegal for a long time because people like um, the hired help um, living on the property. But for most of LA and most of the state of California, uh, the granny flats haven't been um, allowed to build in a long time. So the idea is that, hey, you build this building, you convert your garage, and it's gonna be rented for less than new construction. And then um, somehow it alleviates the, uh, the low income housing you know, by, by, by providing more low-income housing opportunities, right? So, I mean, it's cool. It's great, especially if you're uh, on, on a fixed income. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing for my mother-in-law um, when we get to the case study section. But uh, it's basically an independent building. It's going to have a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, or it could be a studio. Uh, there are some guidelines depending on what city you're in. Um, and it... it Typically, it looks like something like this, like this bullet point here. It's a granny flat, a second uh, second unit. It could be a unit above the garage. Uh, it could be the entire garage gets converted. Um, you could even have it attached. It could be a, a, an attached second unit with its own kitchen and bathroom and entrance, okay? These are things that are totally illegal before, and after these laws passed, they are good to go. It's not that easy, though. It's... A lot of the cities, they're kind of, they, they don't know how to exactly implement it. So the, the, the parameters are still a little bit unclear. And it, it, it takes longer to get this approved than it would like a home edition. Okay, so just, just so that you know, in the city of LA, you cannot build an ADU between the building and the front and the street. It's got to be tucked in the rear. Or that's if it's, if it's detached. City of Torrance, City of Redondo Beach. Redondo Beach is 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 uh, is not an easy deal, man. Th those, those guys down there haven't haven't really figured out the parameters. Um, they're still trying to not let that happen. We had somebody um, come across our office. They hired an architect. Architects having a hard time getting that ADU approved. It's basically, in their case, a garage conversion. Conversions in the rear should be a no-brainer. Can't see it from the street. Redondo Beach is having a hard time. So some cities are harder than others to get the approve, the approval done. So let, let me, I kind of I think it's easier to show you of uh, what we're talking about here. So in this scenario, you've got the house, and then you've got the ADU and 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 the other stuff happening here. Okay, so um, it may look like I mean they definitely want it to look like the main house, but. Um, it, it really, there's a lot of stuff happening on, on, on how it's impacted depending on where it sits on the lot. Like, I'll give you an example. Let's say this is the main house. Um, a lot of the lots here in Redondo and in Torrance have uh, electrical easements going through the rear. Some of these existing garages are right in the electrical easement. So you can't go to a second story. You could technically convert the garage where it sits but if you're going to do a, two, a second story, you got to be completely out of Edison's easement, okay? So it, it, it's really tricky. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest challenge with the ADU right now is where the hell it's going to sit on the lot, okay? And is it going to be attached or not? If you were to just convert an existing garage, it's almost a no-brainer. Pretty darn easy to do that. If you have to, if you're converting existing garage and you're not adding square footage, that is, okay? If you're just, just literally converting the garage, it's, it's going to be a lot easier than if you add square footage to it. Okay, this is some of the, uh, the different looks on it, and, and there's, some, there's going to be some requirements if you move things around. This is what it looks like when you're adding on. Pretty typical. You could be adding, in this case... They're adding the ADU as an attached <coughs> attached structure. And uh, in some cases, you're going to have to do that. If the only place that you can put the ADU is between the property, the uh, existing property, and the front of the house, you're going to have to do this because that's the only way they mandate it. And then there's limitations. The ADU can only be 50% of the existing structure. 
the size existing structure. So it's going to limit you in many cases to the size, to an ADU size. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this is a, it almost looks like a barn conversion. So this is kind of cool. Uh, pretty common. If you do this, if you convert it and you leave the same footprint, it's going to be the easiest way to go. Okay. Hell, in LA, you're still going to be able to get 11, 1200 bucks for that. You get, you'd be surprised what you can get. What kind of uh, floor spacing? I think we've got we've got a picture of one of those, right? Of a, a garage conversion. We're going to share with them. All right. The benefits of the ADU. Uh, it is a major investment. It does add resale value. It does add income. And typically speaking, you're going to get your money back within seven years or less. I did a, a cost analysis for my mother-in-law. She's going to get the entire cost of the building seven years in seven years. So we're, we're anticipating a $100,000 construction cost. Um, she's going to get $14,000 in added rent. And uh, over the life, over a 30-year term, you know, that building is going to, that building is going to generate like almost 400,000 bucks in revenue. So it's, uh, you know, the, you do have to do a rent survey and stuff in your neighborhood and figure out, you know, what your returns are gonna be. But for the most part, it should be, uh, if you don't go crazy uh, with, um, with the construction and making it all super posh or too posh, uh, you should be able to get your money back pretty, pretty quick. So these are all different pictures of examples of ADUs. And you can see that they're totally self-contained, you know, they, they look pretty cool. Uh, more of a modern deal, I don't know if, I don't know, do you guys like this? I'd like to see what your feedback is on this stuff. Do you have any questions, anybody on there with some questions? All right, empty nesters, empty nesters. The, like to move into a small ADU, maybe with your kids, so you can hang around with your grandkids and drive uh, your adult children crazy. Some of you, that may sound like a good idea. I don't know. I don't know if I want my parents back in my house. I love you, Dad. No. Uh, okay. Um, so, the um, actually, there's also some interesting financing for this, too. If you guys have any questions about financing stuff, I'd, I'd love to uh, talk to you about it. All right. Three tips. Three tips when building an ADU. You can convert your illegal illegally converted garage and make it legal, all right? That's actually a really cool outcome. You can fix a lot of stuff, you know, for those of you that have uh, an illegal, illegally converted garage, it probably looks like hell. So it'd be nice to have uh, somebody with some architectural skills carve out that space um, and make it as functional as possible. Uh, you can also, you can also, once you convert that, uh, if you're in an area where it's going to be difficult, they're giving a hard time about building the ADU, you could also build a garage and then, once it's all approved, apply for it to be converted into an ADU. See, the beautiful thing about the state law is that it, you cannot be denied this. If you live in a single, if you live within the parameters, it's got to be a, a single family residence, a single family residential neighborhood. You, you can't be denied this. They, you you got to just be persistent and hopefully you hire somebody who's a Rottweiler like me that'll, that'll you know, just become unbearable to the city until they approve your stuff. Legally, of course, you understand. All right, so, so, so tip number one, you can convert your illegal garage and make it legal. Tip number two, how to deal with the lack of parking. You, did you know that two parking spaces, sorry, four parking spaces, equals one car space for parking, okay? That's right, that's how they do math. The city does math like that. Why do you look surprised? Four parking spaces? I think, no, no, four parking spaces for a bicycle equals one car space, okay? That's right. Somehow, if you chop up your car into four bicycles, uh, that makes, that meets that requirement, okay? I don't know. They had to look for a reason. They had to look for a way that was somewhat plausible uh, to allow you to park another car on the street and irritate the hell out of all of your neighbors. Okay, so that's how you do it. You can show on the plans where you're going to put a little bike rack uh, to stick four bikes um, and you're good to go. The other one is you have to call out like the nearest bus stop. The bus stop's got to be, I don't know, what is it, a half, quarter mile? Half a mile. Half a mile. Yeah, you want to walk to half a mile of the bus stop. 
Uh, if you can walk a half mile to a bus stop, you're good. So I'd rather put the bike thing in there, to be honest with you. But it, some cities are going to give more importance to the bicycle um, and than the, the bus stop than others, right? So like if you live in Santa Monica, it seems like uh, everybody wants to ride a bike in Santa Monica. Okay, building permits. Tip number three, you better take the plans, the proposed plans. Now, oh man, I got to tell you, this is one of the frustrating things. One of the things that I've been doing recently is, the frustrating thing is that many of you are very uh, hesitant to fork over a ton of money for architectural engineering, and you don't know if they're going to approve the plans or not. So the best way to do it, this is tip number three, is to get a concept plan in place where you build your your or this is what we're doing, we basically will draw out the existing location, draw a proposed ADU, do the interior floor plan for the ADU and everything. Just don't do engineering. Basically do the the first third of the plans. Maybe almost up to second thirds. So you can do that for a lot less money, probably you know under three grand. And you'll have um, existing plan, existing floor plan, existing layout of the existing house, in relation to the lot and then you're going to have the proposed so you're going to show the new adu building and what that floor plan is going to look like here's the tricky part you got to submit it over the counter first you're going to have a conversation with somebody and uh, with one of the plan checkers you got to go to planning first and then uh, building and safety and um, get some feedback from them once you get the feedback you have the feedback from them you want to uh, submit it Okay, submit it. They're going to do a courtesy submittal. Torrance does a courtesy submittal. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to have all the different departments write some notes on the plans and give you some guidelines. Okay, at the end of that process, for relatively little amount of money, you'll have a pretty good understanding of what they're going to allow you to do. Okay, that is what I think you should do. It's three tips, good tips. It's going to keep you out of trouble. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we're going to talk about our case study two-story ADU in Torrance. We'll be right back. Don't go. The kitchen you want today from Bay City's Construction in the Southern California and Los Angeles area. There is no better company who takes time out of the equation to get you a detailed plan of what your new kitchen will look like. Get your design plans done, your interior design plans done, an entire project scope done right now. Get your finished kitchen in 90 days or less. We are the best in the Los Angeles and Southern California area, and there's no need to shop anywhere else. Just get started with Bay Cities Construction. Go to baycitiesconstruction.com. That's baycitiesconstruction.com. Looking for a bathroom remodel in the Southern California and Los Angeles area? If you've shopped and you've looked at prices and have no clue where to start, let Bay Cities Construction get you started with a quote of get design, interior design, project scope, and know exactly what it will cost to get your bathroom remodeled. There is no guesswork and no need to shop around. Just take time out of the equation and get your new bathroom in 90 days. Get your estimate now at baycitiesconstruction.com. That's baycitiesconstruction.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Alex, Bay Cities Construction. Thanks for stay, staying tuned in. Let's talk about our case study. We got a, a two-story ADU in Torrance. Okay, Torrance, um, pretty interesting city. Our our uh, case study is property is this right here. So let me just kind of give you a lay of the land, okay? Here's obviously the street. You got the uh, shared driveway here. And then you've got a carport. This is a carport here. And then you've got a garage with like a little um, storage kickoff, okay? So pretty tight, okay? Pretty tight backyard. You can see the city's allowed folks to do these crazy additions where there's not a whole lot of open space. Um, the ADU is a little bit more restrictive. Now, there's this is this is one of the one of the main issues we've had here is the this is going to be a two-story ADU. So check this out. You see towards the rear of the property? This ADU right now sits in the Edison easement. That means that when I build a two-story, it's going to hit the power lines, right? If I build it where it is. So we can't do that. I got to knock down the garage, knock down the carport, and then move, you know, move the, 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 the new structure to a new location, okay? So it's, um, it's an interesting situation here. Now here, okay. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker for those of you that 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 didn't know this. If I were to convert the existing garage into the ADU and not add a second story, I could do that. 
I could do that still within the easement without, you know, I don't have to knock it down. That's the crazy thing. In Torrance, uh, well, I mean, the law, I, I wrote the, I, I, I read the law pretty thoroughly. The, the, the fact is that if you want to convert a garage into an ADU, the city cannot make you knock it down and move it. All right. So as long as it obviously doesn't tamper with the power lines. So under this scenario, under the, under the scenario that the customer wants, they want a bigger unit. So I got to go to story and we got to move it and it's going to look like this. So this is a front elevation of what the, what the unit's going to look like. It's going to look like a little mini house, right? It's, it's pretty darn big. So you got your, you got your, your garage and then you're going to, you know, we're proposing this open patio. This is a point of contention. This thing isn't approved yet. We're, we're still in, in negotiations with the city. Um, it's got a kind of a cool second story balcony deal. Balconies are a problem, by the way, by the way, don't want to have too many balconies. Don't want to have too many overhead stuff. Let me show you uh, the floor plan. This is the ground floor plan. Okay. So it looks pretty cool coming through here. You've got your washer and dryer right there. They're not letting me do this damn door. I had to chop that off uh, since, since we've uploaded this, but this, we're trying to make this an open patio situation here where you have walls open um you know maybe with a french door deal we're, we're still kind of fighting that it's kind of a hassle all right this is second story look i mean you could see from this floor plan it's pretty functional it's actually like on a second little mini house right so you've got your kitchen open floor pan living room dining room and then you've got a bedroom here which is a good size a lot of light you got some nice windows you got an outside balcony this goes out to the balcony you've got a um you know, bathroom and the stairs that lead to the, you know, to downstairs ground floor. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I wanted to just to kind of bring you, I wanted to bring some of the headache stuff that I've had to deal with. I got, I got one of the uh, pushback from the city of Torrance was that this wall here had, which nobody sees, which has a six foot uh, cinder block wall in front of it, was too, um, it didn't have enough architectural features to it. Like it needed more windows or some other crap. Most people don't want windows facing your neighbor, especially if you're tight against the property line, okay? The, the homeowner didn't want that. So, you know, I had to put in some windows, but we put them in high. So they're like, they're not very tall, but they're long windows. And that helped to deal with the privacy and it broke up the way that the wall looked like from the outside. But look, this is the stuff you're gonna run into, okay? You know, it's just craziness. Like they don't know what to. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be negative about that, but it's 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 new, right? It's a new deal, so the city doesn't have a lot of precedent. If this was a home edition, it'd just be approved through planning and like one whack, you know, it wouldn't be what what seems to be like kind of like uh, unreasonable requests um, or unusual requests. If it was treated more like an addition. You know, I, I think it would be um, less painful for the person designing the deal. Anyway, I love to answer your questions. Um, you probably have been thinking about uh, an ADU, and you may want to get more clarification, more information on what it's going to take to uh, do an analysis on, on like, is, is it worth it? You know, one of the things I, I think you should consider is the um, the current rent markets. You know, you can go on Craigslist. Um, if you know a realtor, they can do a rent survey for you. But you, I think you should probably quantify what your income is going to be and then um, use that data, divide it by your, your pro projected construction cost, and, and then you can see how long it's going to take for you to get your money back. All right. Hey, if you want to learn more about construction and construction-related topics, please visit our blog. We have a tremendous amount of information on there. And um, it's all there for you. It's 100% free. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Shoot the questions. Well, we do have some questions. Some of the some of the most common questions that we run about AD, that we get from customers about ADUs is how long does an ADU project take to go to build? Oh, probably five or six months. You know, depends if it's real complicated. Seven. If you're in a skinny, that's a nightmare to get. Uh, uh, tools and equipment back there, you know, you can add some time to that, but, you know, four or five, I don't think, if you were to do just a straight up garage conversion, you'd probably do it in four months, maybe five, 
If you're doing a whole ground up thing, it's like six, seven months. Another question that we get is, do we do I need an architect for a project like this? You need architectural and engineering to design it. Drawings? Yeah. You need the drawings. Yeah, you need a full set of drawings. You may also need a survey. You need to have a site survey. Get your property surveyed. Uh, another question is, um, do we does the property owner need to live on the property to build an ADU? The property owner needs to live on the property. You should eventually live on the property. No, they don't have to live on the property. You, you just have to understand that you can't sell. They're not going to have separate addresses in the sense you can sell the ADU and keep the house. They're going to be one. It's going to be one deal. It's going to be one deal. You, the property is going to stay intact. What else? Another question that we get is, how do I know if my, if my property is in a residential area, in a single-family residential area? Uh, it's easy. You can check your title. Um, if you have any questions about it, you can also call your planning department. Uh, they'll they'll be able to tell you like in five minutes. They'll look up your your address and they'll tell you ASAP. Some of you guys are are some of the neighborhoods. It's funny. It's like in a mixed area. You'll have some duplexes, so your your lot has to be zoned. Um, I think you have to be single family residents to be able to do the ADU. So that's that's kind of the caveat. Look, but it, hey, if you're if you're zoned multifamily residential, then it's you know it's a duplex. So who cares? It's going to be. You can still do it, right? But you can't. You can't be in a. You, if you're in a multifamily area already, you got to meet the guidelines for multifamily, not the guidelines for ADU. Guidelines for ADU are a little bit more flexible. They're gonna let you do some stuff you wouldn't be able to do if you're if you're building a duplex or a triplex. Another question that we that we run into is: Will an ADU project affect my property taxes? Yeah, you're gonna get reassessed. It's going to be more valuable. It's going to be assessed for more. Uh, another question that we usually guess is for customers that don't have a garage, they just have a carport, can they still build an ADU? Yes. Yes, you can build an ADU. You just need the room. If you have the room and the open space requirement to new construction is met, you can build an ADU. Another question that we see is... Um, when it actually comes down to construction, can they still live on the property while construction happens? Yeah, absolutely. Most of the time, your the main residence is not affected, so you can uh, you can definitely live there. You know, you have to deal with the you know nuisance of construction, but you can live there. Another question is, uh, what's the largest size that you can build an ADU? I think it's 1,800 square feet or 50%, if it's 15, 1,800 square feet if it's detached. And if it's attached to the main house, it can be 50% of whatever the square footage is of the main house. Another question that we see is, what if they, what if they live in an unincorporated area? you got to go to the county, but you'll still, the county will, has a building of safety. Like, if you're in unincorporated L.A. County, the Lomita, in the city of Lomita, that's where you go to the county to get your stuff checked out get your plans approved another question that we get is uh, can you build an ADU in a hillside uh, no there's uh, hillsides are like a nightmare if you're on a hillside it's gonna be uh, the usable space there's all these ratios and it's it's kind of a rough deal but you should um, if you have any questions if about it you should you know send us a uh, send us some pictures of your place and your address and stuff, and we'd love to talk to you about it. But it, it, hillsides complicate everything. They complicate home additions. They complicate uh, ADUs. It's it's a hillside. It's it's a much more sensitive area to build in. Another question that we get is, uh, what if my current garage is in front of my lot? Can it still build an ADU? Yes, you can convert it. You can't knock it down and build a new one. They won't let you do that. But it, you can convert. Okay, the city of LA hates that, but the, the state law says that you're not mandated to knock it down unless you're really changing the footprint. If you leave the footprint of the garage, even though it's between the front, the street, and the structure, you, you should be able to make a case for, because it's, it's, the law is really clear about that. If, you're gonna not, if you have to change the footprint of it, it's kind of all bets off. 
the city of LA is going to like throw a fit and it's, they're going to roadblock it. They're going to stonewall it hard. At least that's been my experience. They're a nightmare. When it when it's on a hillside and the ADUs between the property and the and the structure, it's it's a tough deal. Uh, one last question is how how do you legalize an unpermitted ADU? Man, that's the easy part. You um, you have to run new waistline, new power to it. Make sure that everything's all legit. That um, all of the power connections that there's enough capacity electrical wise that there's enough capacity with your sewer line and um, you know in many cases you're gonna probably strip the inside of the uh, of the the way that it was built out if it was built out poorly so but it can be done it can be done and it should be done if you're gonna have somebody but most of you guys don't know if you built a non permitted uh, thing a non-permitted space and you lease it out in the city of la the the tenant that you find is not required to pay your rent so check that out you're gonna have to evict them it's gonna be a nightmare so don't don't do that you you rent it to the wrong person they figure that out they're just gonna sit there and squat and not pay rent so a lot of people don't know that so a little bit of info for you a little golden nugget Another question, another question is, is covered parking required for your tenants? Covered parking is not required, and there's ways around it by the uh, bus stop, half mile, and by your bicycle parking. You have uh, three dozen <laughs> bicycles parked all over your house <laughs> to make up for your, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know, I'm sorry. I, I, look, it's kind of a ridiculous thing. I don't, you know, you're going to replace uh, one car with four bicycles, but. Whatever. It made sense to somebody. I think it was, honestly, it was just my honest opinion. I think it was just, they needed to have a mechanism to 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 justify or, or make right or, or excuse the fact that you're going to throw another car onto the street. And, you know, that's the big the big pushback from the neighbors is all these cars um, parked on the street. You don't have any street parking. One last question is uh, that we usually get from viewers is uh, their town hasn't adopted a local ordinance for ADUs, does the state law protect them or can they still build an ADU? Yeah, state law is going to supersede the municipal laws. Look, look, the thing is, you got to look at this, you got to look at this uh, with the reality of the situation. They haven't been a lot of these built. So a lot of the planners are still not sure. And the, here's the other kicker that I found out uh, that I've, through my experience, right, is the stuff that they'll allow, that they're allowing, like let's say they allow you to put in an air conditioner for the ADU in a particular location, that air conditioner got put in and somehow it was noisy. The neighbors started complaining about it. Now they're making you put the air conditioner in some other place, either on the roof or some other area on the property. So like, like it's a very fluid situation. There, there isn't a proven precedence for this. So, you know, you, you should be aware of that. You're going to get a lot of weird pushback on things that you know like i mean in all honesty if, if you're gonna put an ac unit in your place you, you, you need to put an ac unit in place and, and you know if your neighbor doesn't like the noise or whatever uh as long as obviously the unit's working right your, your neighbor should probably have double pane windows you know and the neighbor's probably gonna bar uh, complain about other dogs barking or you know whatever you know the, the the these are things that if you live in the city in the neighborhood uh you, you know you're entitled to have a freaking air conditioner in your house you know so these the but the but you have to understand the city responds to the neighborhood uh, complaints and that causes pushback when you are presenting your plans right because they got to deal with the city people the planners and stuff they got to deal with the complaints they got to do something it can't be just like blowing people off so you you end up getting um, you end up having to deal with an air conditioner unit that's in the middle of your freaking backyard because you couldn't you know you couldn't stick it somewhere else so anyway should know should know that be forewarned the adu business is not an easy business so are we done are we done with the questions all right guys hey thanks for watching another episode for those of you watching on a replay please follow us here on tuesdays 5 30 p.m Sometimes we start a little later because we got a lot of work to do here. And sometimes but, on Wednesdays. And sometimes we do it on Wednesdays because today is Wednesday. 
But uh, hey, look, I hope you find some value in the show. We love uh, putting the show together for you as an informative uh, component to our business practices. Uh, if you want some more information on us, we've been in business 15 years. You can look us up on Yelp and Facebook and see what the uh, social media world is saying about us. If you have some questions about a project, you want to talk to me about a project, please send me an email to alex at baycitiesconstruction.com. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the little button below, and uh, we'll send you a little uh, invite when we go live. For those of you um, that are Facebook watchers, please like us on Facebook, and uh, you can also instant message us, uh, send us an instant message, and we will respond. Brian uh, scans the uh, our messages all the time, and he responds right away. All right, here's our contact info. Here's our places you can see our reviews. Love to talk to you about your project. Love to answer some questions. Uh, my name is Alex with Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you do not need a contractor. You need a team of pros. My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros. Hey, I have an amazing offer for you. If you want to build that ADU out, you want to do your plans, architectural engineering, $12,500, okay? And I'll give you $3,000 towards your construction costs, all right? $12,500, bucks, 3 grand towards construction, you end up paying about $9,500 for the plans. It's a good deal. It's a big battle that we have to make and we're going to fight for you like we always do for our clients. So if you're ready to roll, uh, go ahead and uh, send us a message or go to baycitiesconstruction.com and book your appointment with me. Love to talk to you about it. Hope you're doing well and I'll see you next week. My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros.